We switch topics now from the city's older generation to the youngest residents. The city of Coral Gables is home to thousands of children, and quite a few of them, more than you probably think, are living in foster homes or group homes. For more information on this special group of children, we have with us today Jackie Collier. She is the Regional Director of the Florida Department of Children and Families. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So foster homes, uh, there's a big stereotype. Many people don't exactly know what it is. Yeah. Can you explain it to us? Well, you know, in the um, court system, when children are, have to be removed from their families due to maltreatment or for abuse or neglect, um, they're sometimes placed in foster homes. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand that foster homes are basically the choice of last resort because okay. our first choice always is to find family members or to find other um, f friends that might, might be able to take the children in. Because it's really important, for us at least, to have children live with individuals whom they know and whom they're comfortable with and whom they feel a sense of, you know, some type of bond. Okay. And, um, and then tell me about the, the, a foster child um, uh, in Coral Gables. Is it, uh, when you have a foster home, is it one child per home or how does that work? It depends. Sometimes it's one child per home, but foster homes can house up to five children. It depends upon, you know, the size of the home. It depends upon the number, um, the type of child that the foster families want. Um, because we try to use foster homes on a temporary basis. It's just until we can either reunify the child with their family or until we can get them adopted. And sometimes that process takes a lot longer than we would like, but um, foster home size depends upon the size of the home and uh, the needs of the child. For the most part, we try and place children who are siblings in mm -hmm. one home together. Mm -hmm. So if four children have to be removed from a family, we would place all four of those children in one home if possible. So the foster parents in this case um, are not necessarily looking to adopt the kids, but they're there as a, a temporary, you exactly. know, safe place for them. Exactly. They're usually a temporary safe place. Sometimes it works out, though, that the foster parents will adopt the children because sometimes going through the process of possible reunification takes such a long time. Um, the foster parents become attached to the children, the children become attached to the foster home. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, sometimes they are adopted by the foster family. Mm -hmm. um, right now in Dade County, we have a turnaround for children being returned or reunified with their families of approximately 18 months, but sometimes as few as five months, three months. Wow. Um, we have a wonderful program called Drug Court, where any individual who has a substance abuse problem, we really work hard to get them returned or reunified with their families within 90 days. Mm, wow. It's a challenge sometimes, yeah. but we, we work real hard to get it done. So um, specifically in Coral Gables, there mm -hmm. are 34 yeah. foster homes and three group homes. Right. Can you uh, tell me, that, uh, give me a distinction of what is a foster home and what is a group home? Well, a foster home is just a family that has taken in a child on a temporary basis, mm -hmm. waiting a, upon reunification or, uh, or for the child to be adopted. A group home, on the other hand, is um, a, usually a facility that can house up to, depending upon the size of the group home, up to 10 children. Um, those homes are any home within your community. Um, they don't look like any other home. I mean, they don't look any different than mm -hmm. any other home. And um, the individuals who live there um, hire people who come in and help out with rearing the children because, and taking care of everything. Because you know, when you've got 10 kids <laughs> living in a home, you need help with getting all of that done. Um, so the individuals who take these family, take these children in, have usually had some history with either foster care or with adoptions and who want to give back to the community, who want to give back to these children and give them the opportunity to grow up to be you know, healthy, productive citizens of Coral Gables and of Miami-Dade yeah. County. You know, there's three group homes, which means they've got to be right. large homes. It's right. very conducive here in Coral Gables oh, to yes. have that because of yeah, the, large the big homes. homes. Yeah. Um, but 34 foster homes as well. Is that average for a city of, of our size? Yeah. I mean, Well, Coral Gables has fewer foster homes than any of other municipalities. Um, 
Um, but for the size, it's it's still a little bit lower because yeah. you know the home values here are a little bit higher. Yeah. So as a result, we don't have quite as many individuals who um, do you know take children in and foster them until parents can become you know whole and well again. But um, we do have, um, for example, in Hialeah, um, which is probably a little bit larger than the city yeah. of Coral Gables, there are like 143 really? um, foster homes. Yeah. And what's the range of, of the age of the children in DCF custody? Uh, from zero to 23. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We have babies. In fact, I was just talking to a foster parent um, last week who has two infants in her home. Um, one is, was four days old and the other one was um, two weeks old when she got them. Um, and, you know, she's, gonna, she's looking to perhaps adopt one of them uh -huh. because the, the mother has decided that she does not want the, the, uh, the two-week-old child. Um, the, the child who is three days old, um, they're still, the mother is just trying to figure out what she's going to do. It's a substance abuse case, so just got to figure it out. Wow. Yeah. Um, and um, going back to Coral Gables, 31 uh, kids live in out-of-home care mm -hmm. and uh, 17 in home. So not not a big no not a big number though not a big number but they're but they're they're part of the community as yep. you were telling you'd me never, before we started you'd never know <laughs> these are kids that go to school like every everyone day. else and yeah. go to school every day and nobody would notice unless of course the children told or the foster families said something about it but for the most part for the most part the kids just blend into the community and are a part of the community there's still some challenges because you know kids when they're removed from their families you know, just have a difficult time with mm -hmm. it. But, um, you know, the foster families do the best they can to make the children feel, you know, at home and mm -hmm. that this is their home. So, you know, that, that's how it works. And now uh, changing topics, mm -hmm. um, child abuse. Coral Gable's definitely not immune to no. cases of child abuse. No. Not a you know, we're all, all human. Yeah. Uh, in 2007, um, there were 149 reported cases of child abuse uh, in Coral Gables, and in uh, 2008 it was 117. Is that normal? You know, it's not normal, but is it normal or average? It's for about average. It it's is about average, average for, for a city this size. And, and, and I want you to know there's a distinction between reported and, and you know, and found and findings, because sometimes it's just a report, you know, and we go out, we confidentially, you know, check out and talk with the family, talk with the children and find out. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that of those 149, probably 10% of them, we would actually go in, you know, and offer services or give, give the family, you know, some options for what they could do. Um, with the economy being the way it is, there have been, you know, the increase, there's been an increase in child abuse. Really? And there's been an increase in us, you know, providing services or making referrals for services for families because I think that the stressors of the economy and the way things have been changing lately, you know, it's put a lot of pressure on families just, just to be able to maintain and still do the things that they'd like to do. So um, what we've been able to do is just to make referrals, keep families together, let them know that they have support, and just to give them the kinds of things that'll help them stay, you know, focused and know that, you know, we'll get through all of this. It's just a challenging time right now. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate you. you coming here. Thank you so much. And uh, DCF does have a number of brochures uh, with information on how to help raise your child. And they also have information on if you're thinking of adopting or if you want to become a foster parent. You can find all that information online at myflorida.com. You can then uh, click on find an agency and then select children and families from that list. You can also call their communications office. That number is 305-377-35055. Again, 305-377-5055. And when we return, we're going to go out and find your wishes for dad on Father's Day. We'll be right back.